Welcome back and today we're going to take a look at the brand new Flytanium Arcade. I think this is Flytanium's first folding knife besides their battle song that they came out with. And this one comes in at $199. You have a nice size EDC knife at 7.70 inches. Perfect for my hands. And it comes with a 3.22 inch blade of S35 VN stainless steel. I like some good S35 and hopefully they did a good job on this one. Um, you have a nice classic drop point. Good swedge up top to thin out that tip a little bit. Nice effective row of grippy jimping right here. Beautiful stone wash finish on the blade. You do have a sharpening choil, but it just clears that plunge. You may have a sharpening before it starts to widen up back there. I would definitely like to see them extend that a little bit more. Dual thumb studs, they're anodized uh, titanium studs that are the same ones that fit the Benchmade bug out. You have a decent height flat grind that's not super thin behind the edge. It's coming in around 23 thousandths behind the edge. So let's see how it performs. The knife came surprisingly sharp out of box. It was almost hair whittling sharp. And uh, even though it's a little thicker behind the edge than I like, keep a nice sharp edge on it and it's going to perform pretty nicely for the majority of things you cut especially cardboard unless it's that very dense uh triple wall cardboard double wall cardboard then it may give you a little bit of struggle but uh the way it sits right now and as sharp as it came it was blasting through this um i'm just hoping the s35 vn is done right and it holds up we shall see but yeah so far so good very, very nice. Now we're going to test the ergos and see how well this edge wants to bite into this piece of pine. And I was kind of worried because there's some hard edges on the aluminum that feel kind of sharp. But in my grip, at least, uh, for the most part, I increased the pressure, uh, uh, put a lot of pressure into the wood just to see. And I could feel those hard lines, but they weren't terrible by any means. Um, as you can see, I was able to get it done and I was putting a lot of pressure at the end. Um, you know, maybe prolonged cutting like that, you would start to feel it to be uncomfortable, maybe a small hot spot, but I didn't, I didn't feel it. Uh, so since the tip's not lower than the center line of the pivot, you have a little bit more belly than I usually like, but this translates well on a flat cutting surface and man oh man this thing is blasting through everything I put in front of it the tubing wasn't a problem whatsoever even with the thicker edge even the corner cardboard I'm using that tip up there pushing that belly through it and it is performing outstanding uh, tons of bite left right here when I'm getting through the denim it's it's making it feel like it's not even there and yeah very comfortable in that pinch grip I didn't feel the um, I didn't feel the shark lock at all either. That's always a plus. So far, doing great. Now we move to the half inch twisted sisal rope, and right away, just look how it's popping that rope. I mean, I, I was kind of in awe on how easily it was cutting through it. I mean, very very minimal pressure, and I think I push cut the entire way through this um it was comfortable that belly made it very easy just to kind of push down into the uh rope and yeah i think at this point i was kind of mind blown for how how good that edge is still doing i mean we we did all that stuff right before this and it doesn't feel like the edge is phased in the least um the micarta and the uh aluminum gave me some texture so it didn't want to slide around in the hand so it made it very comfortable and I had a really good grip in that pinch grip, um, which also makes it really comfortable, you know, doing this for a long period of time. We made 80 cuts before I ran out of rope and I definitely could have done more. Once I'm finished, I will test that edge out. I think it's pretty good. Now check that edge and I must say I was super, super impressed. Look at that. <laughs> probably the best s35 i've tested so far on the channel let's take a look at the deployment and the action you have dual thumb studs that are easily accessible 
nice and snappy. It's riding on ball bearings. And being that this has the shark lock, once you release that lock, it has absolutely no friction on that blade whatsoever. You can reverse flick it. Now it did take mine a little while to break in, but now it's, as you can see, it's a free dropper. The detent of the knife is pretty good. As you can see, it still sucks it back. I mean, it can go all the way to right there and still suck it back. That's one thing I like about this lock. The thumb studs are comfortable and you can change them out easily with a Torx driver right there on both sides. You can swap them out with any of the Flytanium Benchmade thumb studs. Now let's talk about the handle real quick. I talked about it during the testing, but I would have loved to see them knock this edge off right here on the aluminum. It is a little bit sharp and I, it didn't bother me as bad as I thought whenever I was doing uh, the hard cutting into the wood. I could kind of feel it, but it wasn't, you know, major. Maybe after a long period of time, it would start to bother me, but definitely not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Uh, but I would have loved to see them knock that off. Hopefully you can see that hard edge right there on both sides of that. Let's take a look at the handle area. You have an aluminum handle. This one is the gunmetal gray. It's got that like somewhat chalky, tacky feeling. It's pretty grippy. And they also had other colors of aluminum as well. You have Torx T8 for the pivot. Just now had to double check, but you do have a Torx T10 for the pivot. I was wondering why it was a little sloppy with the T8. Nice tight fitment, nice uh, hardware there. You have Torx T6 for these body screws. I'm guessing they use that for the inlay purpose, I don't know. I would have much rather see those T8, especially if you could be taking them off if you wanna swap out these inlays. I went with green canvas micarta, but there's several different options to choose from. You have a pretty large lanyard hole that can fit a baby finger in there. You have two massive, massive standoffs here. If you don't like standoffs, you can get a titanium backspacer, brass, and I think a, maybe a couple other materials if you'd rather a backspacer. Now this one is a deep carry pocket clip, but it's only tip up right hand carry only. Somebody commented in my uh, unboxing video that if you buy this from the Flytanium site, put in the notes that you want it tapped for left-handed carry. They said that they would do that for you. I don't know, you know how true that is. Hopefully it is because I think they're handicapping themselves because this is a completely ambidextrous lock and you have the dual thumb studs. It just doesn't make any sense to me. But I'm sure they did that so they could keep the inlay on this side nice and clean. Your knife almost disappears. You have just a little bit of nub sticking out and, and it functions properly. You don't have too much ramp there. It goes in and out of the pocket nicely. I would have loved to see them uh, inset the clip into the micarta. But at least they countersunk the pocket clip screws. I would have also liked to see them being that they... Uh, do customizations so well we'd we'll love to see them come out with a uh, mill titanium pocket clip maybe that's something they'll do in the uh, future who knows now let's check the lock up <laughs> mine has absolutely no movement up or down left or right very very tight lock up and uh, this shark lock demco designed it to when it wears in it moves further and further up so it's just going to get stronger and stronger very, very strong locking mechanism. Speaking of the lock, you do have jimps on the front and on the back right here. I'm not sure, I guess, if, you, if you're holding it back here, but that's very uncomfortable. Uh, the jimps right there go all the way to the end and they grab a hold of that fin finger nicely. Just pull this back and release that lock. Just like on the AD20.5 and the AD20. It functions nicely. Now, being that it's fine cut jimping, it, and it grabs that finger pretty aggressively. You know, if you're a fidgeter, after a long time, that may start to bother your finger. Uh, I haven't really had an issue with it, but I haven't been sitting there doing this all day with it. I usually <laughs> use it and then pop it down. The blade centering on my knife is perfect. Now they did everything they could to lighten it up. You have aluminum, which is pretty darn light, and they have the cutout for the inlays, plus they skeletonized the inside of the aluminum. They did all that because you have this extra piece of steel that's going to weigh it down some. And you have this, you know, chunk of S35VN. Let's see how good they did. 3.47 ounces. Excellent for me. Quick size comparison with the Ontario Rat 1 and 2. Spyderco PM2 and Para 3. Next is the Kaiser Escort and the Benchmade Bugout. Benchmade Mini, Damas, and CGRB Pyrite. 
Lastly, we have the Kaiser Militaw and the Kaiser Veritas. Now for my nitpicks complaints, I would have loved for them to open this uh, sharpening trial a little bit more to give me a little bit more sharpening life. I would have loved to see this thinned out a little bit more, but it performed outstanding. And uh, like I said, it, it, this could possibly start to wear out your finger if you fidget a lot. And also, I would have liked to see it tap for lefties, and I would have loved to see them countersink this clip into the frame. And uh, most of all, to knock this hard edge off the aluminum all the way around. But that, all that said, I know that sounds like a lot. I still love the knife. Definitely, definitely can recommend it. If any of those things I said aren't deal breakers, I think it's an attractive knife. Uh, I thought it performed outstanding. It's got beautiful action. It's uh, highly customizable. And yeah, I think it's priced well. At, at $200, I think it's more than acceptable, like I said, especially for some of the best S35 EN that I've tested on the channel. If I had to take a wild guess, I would think that being these are made in, the, in Taiwan, I would think it's the same Taiwanese factory that makes cold steel and definitely the one that makes the, cold, the, the Demco 80 20.5 since they used uh, Demco's Shark Lock. So there you go. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. I hope everybody's having an absolute amazing day. I will see y'all on the next one. Peace. Ah.